throw some more B7. Uh, this is about biodiversity, and you might remember it from the books. This is where it was talking about tigers. Now, I would suspect that they are not really going to ask you about tigers on the exam. Uh, they'd probably give you some other animal, but I'm going to talk about tigers here, and I'll try and put some other examples in um, so you get an idea of it. Um, it's all to do with biodiversity, which means really the variety of um, life, I suppose. You can talk about uh, biodiversity in terms of how many different species you have, how many different tigers, lions, panthers, leopards, whatever it may be. Uh, but you can also have biodiversity within a species. Um, remember, all animals are different, so all tigers are different to each other. But if you've got the, the population of tigers shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, there's less diversity within that population because there are less tigers around. Uh, that's not a good thing. There's, there's less genes to be, uh, less genes in the gene pool, and so you, you start to get inbreeding, basically. Uh, if you go back to um, a couple of centuries ago, estimates of, of 45, 50,000 tigers in the population in India, uh, mainly through hunting, and uh, those numbers shot really far down, you know, within 150 years, it was into just a few thousand. Um, the other problem is population increases. The uh, population of India is on a massive increase at the moment. And um, it means that, although India is a very large country, it means that people um, in, in towns and villages are more likely to come into contact with tigers. And as far as they're concerned, tigers are still a, a very, very dangerous thing. So once we start humans and tigers and their, their ranges start to overlap, that's when we can still get some... Um, more animals being killed unfortunately. Um, something that also proved a problem was that um, tiger parts are used in Chinese medicine or certain parts of Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine I should say, um, where people believe that certain parts of the tiger could be used to um, make medicines that would do all kinds of things. Now we wouldn't use this kind of medicine um, particularly for, for treating also um, for treating things in hospitals but it is still used in parts now the problem is that the numbers are so low not particularly that they're taking parts from tigers although you may disagree with that the problem is that the numbers of these things have gone so uh, down so low so what's happened is people have brought in bans on hunting and not just on hunting probably a more effective way is to ban any products that contain those things Something similar has been done with elephants, for example, where you banned ivory. If you couldn't sell ivory and you couldn't buy it, there would be a little point in hunting and poaching for it. Uh, rhino horn as well, there's another product used in traditional Chinese medicines. Um, at the moment, another popular one that's uh, in decline is shark fins. And that's used to make a traditional soup in the Far East. Now, there's no ban on that at the moment, but if you banned being able to buy and sell it, um, you'd probably see a reduction in the people... Um, hunting for sharks for their fins. Now of course if that's part of your culture you might find this odd. Um, it's easy to look and think well why why were the why are people killing these things off but as a comparison something like cod which in recent years has declined massively as an unhappy cod in the North Sea the stocks have really shut down. They have people kept buying it. Why? Well it was just a traditional thing that people ate. Fish and chips. Cod was a very very popular fish and the stocks really, really went down. And in the North Sea, they had to ban them um, until the numbers have gone up. It looks like they're on the increase again. But don't sort of fall into this trap of thinking, what a bizarre thing to do to hunt sharks or tigers or whatever it may be. Um, we also hunt animals and we, we hunt them into um, a point where they become endangered. What's the value of them? Um, well, a couple of ways you can look at this. You can look at the economic value in looking how much value uh, you get in terms of money. So for example, tourism, a lot of people would visit um, these areas to, to see these tigers. Um, they also have a kind of, how could we put it, emblematic appeal, I suppose. What do I mean by that? I think it's like a panda, which is um, a very endangered species, but people associate China with pandas. Um, and so it's a powerful, I suppose it's a tool for promotion. If you have, um, I know it's not quite the same thing, but pandas and things in, in zoos create a lot of interest. creates a huge amount of money. So there is an economic value behind that. And very importantly, of course, there's also ethical arguments. Some people would argue that we shouldn't be hunting animals at all. There's a, a big ethical issue about do we have a responsibility as humans to not hunt species to extinction? So 
that that does feed in as well. Um, it's not just a case of all about money. So we can protect them by, as I said before, banning all kinds of things, banning products, and also setting up um, reserves, which are areas that are protected. You can't build in them, perhaps can't live in them, um, and things like park ranges um, to make sure that things aren't getting hunted or shot.